Well, welcome to See Here Love. It's season five. Woo! It's great to have the team together. Lisa, Brooke, Joanna, Cheryl, welcome back. Well, welcome to See Here Love and the start and launch of our brand new season four. Can you believe it? This is season four of See Here Love and we are so glad that you've joined us today in the living room and around the couch for the start of our season. Well, welcome to See Here Love. I'm Melinda Estabrooks, your host, and this is a special show today because today we are outside of Studio C and we are in Edmonton, Alberta with a live audience in front of us. Ladies, make some noise. for our first show of season two. Yeah. Woo. Oh, can you back, believe lady. it? I know. Welcome back. Oh, this is so great to have us all around the so table tanned, again. You're so tan, y'all. Yeah. I am tan. Hey. Hey. Back here. Got <laughs> another <laughs> sister in the building. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> well, welcome to our very first show on See Here Love and the launch of our online destination, a place where you will be inspired resourced and equipped for your everyday life. And what a perfect day to launch our new show at our website then on International Women's Day. That's today, right now. Yeah. Well, I'm your host, Melinda, and I'm joined by my wonderful co-host every Monday, Wednesday and Friday around this kitchen table to share with you our thoughts on faith, community, life, love, and relationships. And we'll be sharing our own stories, our favorite things, and essentially our lives with you. Why? Because as we have shared our stories on big stages, in schools, at churches, at teen events, at women's conferences, and yes, even some of us on TV, we have seen women and men respond to our authenticity. And I've told us time and time again, we now know that we're not alone, that we're actually more the same than we are different, and that by sharing your story, you have given us the courage to share ours. Welcome to the 175th episode of See, Hear, Love. The, the theme today is unending love, amazing grace. And that is exactly what we're celebrating today with this live studio audience. We're so glad to have you. And we wish everyone watching online, watching later on, would be able to eat with us because the food looks so good. But we want to remind you what this show is all about. If this is the first time ever you're watching the show or maybe you've watched us over and over again, really the mission of this show is to make a place where women are seen, heard, and loved by God. And that's what we do week after week, 175 episodes strong. And really the whole idea behind this is a vision that Melinda Estabrooks has had where real women living authentic lives champion one another and grow in their faith. And so that's why we're here today celebrating 175 episodes together. And what better way to celebrate than to show all the mistakes we've made along the way. Let's hit that blooper reel. I don't know how that helps, that, but it helps me. Ah. Not you. Here we go. It's him. <laughs> Woo! Okay. Energy. Okay, here we go. Ready? Woo! Okay, ready? Woo! <laughs> Take this! Like, he goes, are you finished lifting? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you always laughing? Okay. We captured that. I'm going to be captured that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he is. Slow to anger and rich in love. Slow to anger and rich in love. Okay, I just feel like singing every day now. Okay, here we go. Ready? We are family. Mm -mm -mm, yeah. Okay. I got, I got all my sisters, sisters with me. me. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, wow. We are family. Oh, yeah. Well, it's just another manic Nick Monday. Monday. Oh, 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 <laughs> I wish it was oh, Sunday. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> that's yeah. where all that you from. millennials or Gen Z Z watchers. Mm -hmm. That's Manic Monday by the Bangles, an 80s band, one of my yes. favorites. Okay. And it also goes on to say, I wish it were Sunday because that's my fun day. That's right. All right, I gotta start this again because yeah. I can't actually find it because half of this book is it's Korean. Korean. <laughs> It's in oh, columns, so you just need to go down the columns. <laughs> she's, she's, I'm trying, and I, I knew, I knew I she just, was done for I when can. she did. Yeah. This is a problem versus this is just like a normal amount of... I'm not sure if I should keep talking right now, because there's a lot happening around me. Well, let's... Two, one. 
Watch on see here love. What? Watch on love here see. Let's try it again. Ready? Wait, what is it? Watch on see here love. Okay, ready? Ready? Three, two, one. Watch on see here love. Oh my goodness. Do you remember those memories? Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. Wow, wow. So this oh, is yeah. the original cast. Yeah. You were right from day one. Day one. Day one of See Here Love on International Women's Day three years ago. Here we were together. And I think it's just it's just a moment for us to pause and kind of think through what has it been like? What have you learned? So let's start off with that. I mean, I think for me, the unending love, amazing grace theme was really key for me because it really is God's love and grace that has really brought me through, yeah. sustained me in very hard things as you launch a new idea from really like, you know, an idea and dream to then like, it's actually happening. Yeah. So why did you say yes? 175 shows ago to come on this little dream. This was not what it was like. It was a web show in a little tiny studio uh, with just myself and a director, Iman, and me. And that was it. And you trusted me and believed in me. Why? Uh, okay, well, you know, two words, Melinda Estabrooks. Um, <laughs> Hard to say no to this lady right here when she uh, she's a woman with a vision. Um, but what I loved about it, and I remember I said to you when you rolled out the whole idea, I said I don't I don't want to be part of anything that's fake and fluffy. And we've done the hairspray and the makeup and all of that. I, I the, the gospel Barbie I called it. Yeah. Mm, yeah. And I I wanted it to be something real and authentic. And you said oh we're we're going there. Yeah. And we've gone there. Yeah and we've not held back, and I love that about our show. Good, thank yeah. you. Thanks for joining yeah. me on the journey. Joanna, what Honor. about you? Yeah, number one thing is relationship. I trusted you, so I said, let's do it. Yeah. I'm up for a good time and an adventure. <laughs> we didn't know how long it would last. We yeah. didn't, I don't no think idea. we knew that it would no. go this long at that yeah. point. But uh, I saw it as an amazing opportunity, particularly at the time because you were talking so much about the digital content. Mm -hmm. um, and, and in my own work, you know, in terms of the digital world really matters to me because that's where people are spending hours and hours yes. a day. And so the idea of trying to think in that context about how to talk to people right where they are, on mm -hmm. their screens, on, in the palm of their hand, mm -hmm. um, felt like we were going to be doing something new and relevant for today. Amazing. I think that for me, you know, launching See Here Love, I shared a little bit of it, but that when I was confronted where there was no Christian women's talk That's show right. in Canada, remember yeah. that? Like yeah. three, four years ago, there was no show. Yeah. And I remember just a sense of God just being like, do it. And I'm like, I don't even know how to do this. How are we going to do this? And so it happened. I think the best thing was we decided to do it online because that's where I wanted to reach like millennials and Gen Z. And that's how we started. And so yeah. thank you for believing and trusting in me. Thank you. It's this. been such an honor it's and a privilege. It's been so fun. And the response is incredible. incredible. Yeah. As, th as we think about fun or a moment, what would you say is your favorite show moment in the past three years with See Here Love? What would be your favorite show or theme or guest even that we've had? <laughs> Well, out of the blooper reel, I always think about these moments where you two sing, <laughs> and you sing songs of a different generation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, that's yeah, true, yeah. that's so, true. You so always know. us yeah. who are a little bit younger. Not just a much, tiny just bit. Just a tiny bit younger. Yes. We, uh, <laughs> we, we don't really know them. Yes. I, I wish I could sing with you. Well, I think we did some Bruce Springsteen she didn't know. Yeah. Then we did Manic, <laughs> Manic, Manic Monday, Monday the Bengals, Bengals we didn't know. Yeah. Then did we do, like... Depeche Mode. Oh, I can't remember. Yeah. We did a whole you, bunch of different things Depeche and you were just like, I, I don't know. Yeah. I yeah. want to be with you, but, but I'm just I, not there. I'm not there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So no, I mean, it's been so fun to have these little moments um, and, and even those intergenerational moments. I think what we do in the bloopers and see behind the scenes is also, I think what happens on set, like when we're recording, yeah, yeah. is that these intergenerational conversations are happening for women uh, that aren't happening necessarily in a lot of other places. Because yeah. of course we have more in common than we do. Even if we don't know the same music, we have so much <laughs> in common. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but we can laugh and connect together in such a meaningful way. Yeah, awesome. Sarah, what are you? Your uh, moment. <laughs> uh, we had Ann Maines on one time. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, there, uh, well, there's two. Bruxy Cavey, who I... You have a little bit of a... a well, we don't need to go. I, I think I have a spiritual holy crush. Crush on Bruxy Cavey. <laughs> every time she gushes and then she's um, like, ha. And then every time he I opens his mouth, she's like, ha. I love brilliant... Uh, yeah. Men, I, uh, I, 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 okay. Okay, oh, just this keep is going. Not coming yeah. out well. Um, 
Well, it's on a live time, stream across the world. Every that's time okay. he okay. Uh, opened his mouth, I was blown away. Yeah, that's true. And yep. uh, it just made me gush all over again. <laughs> and then the other one was Ann Maines when we talked about love relationships right. and mm. the S word. Oh, yeah. Uh, and it was squeamy and fun, and I we know. had some jokes out of it. And, oh, yeah. that was good. Yeah, what was, the show was What get, Do Men Want? Yeah, and I was like, the get it, got it. Yeah, so yeah. What Do Men Want? That was a really good show. Yeah. Uh, I think that, I mean, we've had some, so many great moments. I do think the one that really stuck out to me are the ones that we have addressed mental health, mental health and mental mm. illness. Yes. Some of our top watch shows currently are ones where we talked about uh, living with bipolar and living with uh, borderline personality, stress and anxiety, and depression. They were our number one shows when we addressed those. And so that's like a theme. And those are really, really good. But I think uh, just being with you, I mean, the jokes, the fun, that has just been the best part of it, especially when you're launching, where you feel like you're launching by yourself. Mm. You need people to come alongside of you, believe in the dream, and go, we're with you, we're gonna do this. So that's been good, and seeing it grow. Like if you actually looked at that, you saw us from like this little, that's you know, um, the, kitchen <laughs> table. the kitchen table with a, with a crumpled up, you know, yeah, um, yeah. tablecloth. No crew, just no the crew, just automatic. No crew, TriCaster cameras, and went and had like three angles, yeah. one, Two, Two, three. three. Yeah. And that was it. So every time we were talking, it was like, yes. <laughs> like there was nothing, right? I mean, right. that was it. Yes. And no teleprompter, no makeup. We just, yeah. we were just pretty much our yeah. true and authentic selves. It's so, yeah. so great. Um, what would you say you've learned about yourself along the journey here? I mean, we started off, it's three years ago, and we were in different places now and different, you know, we've had a lot more years now of experience and opportunity as speakers, leaders. Uh, communicators, but what have you learned about yourself, Joe, along this journey? Yeah, that's a great question that I'd like to give a probably a more yeah. a more yeah. drawn out answer to. But I think in short, I've learned a lot about my own voice and how to speak in this context is really different than a lot of my context would be. I have 40 minutes or an hour to give my thoughts on something, but how to be a really clear, succinct communicator. Mm -hmm. But I've really learned that my voice matters, uh, that and that I have something that. Uh, that other women can learn from has been a real privilege to know that that I might have something to offer the women of Canada has been amazing. And it's been great, Joe, to transition you from like you've been on the couch, but now you're our Bible teacher. Mm -hmm. I believe that Joanna is like one of the youngest uh, voices, Bible teachers in Canada on like national platform. I love that you're a woman teaching the Bible, and I think that was part of part of me saying, you know, I want to give you an opportunity because you kind of wanted to flex and stretch in that area. And so it was really cool for me to say, all right, let's 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 do it. Yeah. And it's been really awesome yeah, to see you grow you. in that way. Yeah. yeah, I've learned, like, I can do hard things. <laughs> let's do it. Yeah, amazing. What about you, Cheryl, what you've learned along the journey? Um, I've learned a lot from you, actually. Um, I feel like, I feel like a good movement, a strong movement, has an incredible leader in front of it. And um, I've taken a lot of notes, and um, I thought I was strong. I thought I was pretty strong, yeah. Uh, and so it's been cool to see um, how we, how you build something faithfully um, with authenticity and transparency, and that's been the real connector for me, is to see how my pain and my story and all the mess of my life has really uh, connected because that's what people want. They want honesty and truth. Yeah, yeah it's been you. really cool. Thank you. Yeah. I think, um, you know, what I've learned is, yeah, it takes all of us to, to do this work. It, it takes trust. Uh, I, I've just learned a lot about myself in the three years. I think even in communicating, like I've been speaking for like 20 plus years, but yeah. this is a whole different thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think I also, um, I, I'm in awe of how God just took a little thing and a little person like me, literally and figuratively, yeah, and grew something like this. Like I look around and uh, okay. wow, yeah. and it's it's God, it's community, it's a organization like Crossroads that believes in yeah. me, and it takes everybody uh, to make dreams come true. And so, um, yeah, I think just the learning that it takes everybody. Yeah, right. Uh, and if you fail because some things didn't work, you just get up and try again, and uh, yeah, it's beautiful. I so want to commend you. you on something uh, unprompted. Now you're on the spot. You can okay, oh, great. <laughs> um, as a woman of color, I want to thank you for being intentional in displaying the diversity of the kingdom. Right. 
And, and what a lot of people don't know is that in the guesting, I have seen you make these bold, brave decisions of we need to have all of the voices. It's thy kingdom come. And, uh, and I know for me, uh, it's very hard to get doors to open. And the fact that you saw me just as a black woman bringing all of my true self and not having to dim down or water down or European myself away, but just to be truly me. And, and, and I just thank you for that. And, and we know also that the road is not easy for you as well. And you just continually make space at the table. So I just want to honor oh, you for that. Yeah. Thanks, Cheryl. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, I appreciate that. Uh, well, we have co-hosts Brooke Nichols and Lisa Pack. Unfortunately, weren't able to come, but they did send a video. So let's take a little hey. look at their uh, comments to us today. Hey, everyone. Uh, Brooke here. I'm so uh, so sad that I couldn't be with you today, but congratulations. Uh, see your love on your 175th show. What a milestone. Uh, women across Canada and beyond are being impacted uh, and coming into a relationship with Jesus because of what See Your Love is doing. So I'm so excited to be a part of it. So honored to be a part of it. And yeah, I wish I could be there today. But uh, yeah, you guys have a great time. Congratulations on 175 episodes. Number one, praise God because he is good, he is faithful. Mel, congratulations because of all the hard work that you put into it. I, I hope that you feel just how all your dreams are coming to birth. Um, I'm so sorry I can't be there. I'm actually giving a paper at this nerdy conference at Tyndale, which I love too, so it's my other part of my personality. I, I just hope that you have a wonderful time today. Congratulations, God is good. It's so amazing to be a part of something that is changing so many lives. So thank you and congratulations. Thank you, Brooke and Lisa. Uh, last thoughts to our people who are listening and watching across the world and to our audience here. Any yeah. last encouragement? I think what, what I hope people are hearing out of today is that they're encouraged whatever their dream is, it can happen. Even if it starts very small and humble, uh, 175 episodes later, here we are in a, in a fancier scenario. <laughs> yeah. But that start with what you have where you are. With a few people, you can do so much mm -hmm. to impact people in your neighborhood, in your community. And from, because I talk digital, from that phone in your hand, if you turn it on, uh, you can reach people all over the world now from a simple device like that. So whatever it is on your heart that the Lord's asking you to do, do it and trust that he's going to provide mm -hmm. every step of the way. Beautiful. Thanks, Joe. Yeah, so there's a hip-hop song, preaching from hip-hop now. Yeah. There's a hip-hop song that says, I'm a movement by myself, but we're a force when we're together. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, there's power in community. And I think uh, I love the fact that we have learned um, that we are stronger together. Our voices matter, and uh, we have so much to learn from each other. And so I encourage you to even get into your own See Here Love circles, gather around the, the television or however you're watching the information, and share, unpack what you've learned. Um, even in the talking of things, so many things are healed, mm -hmm. brought to the surface. Um, we need to be a, a, a bigger community, I yeah. think, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. And I would just say this, I guess, to the audience, we all have a story. Yeah. We all have a story. And so if you're holding on to your story, don't <laughs> any longer because we need to hear it. Your children need to hear it. Your friends need to hear it. Your church needs to hear it. If you get a platform like this, the world needs to hear it. But your story is power. Your story is the testimony of what God can do through you know, someone who the world would look at and be like, I don't know. I don't, I don't think that she's got it. She has no education. Uh, she is a brown woman in a, in a world that, you know, has, has challenges. And so I'm, I am in awe that God is bigger yeah. than, than the issues or the things you think that you are. I'm so thankful my mom and dad are here. Yay. So I've shared this story so much about my mom and dad adopting me. Uh, in the Philippines at one week old and mom and dad, thank you. Like this dream couldn't happen without you. And so yeah. I'm so thankful for your support, for adopting me <laughs> and uh, just for your love um, all this way through. So thank you. So it takes some great parents, it does. great community, great people that love you to ensure that a dream happens. So yeah. thank you so much. Thank you, you guys. All right, that's it. You guys, all right, thanks. I'll let you guys go. Thank you. 
it, when I say hardest change, it's also been good because I've had to be confronted with core of who, who am I? Identity. Mm -hmm. Beauty and identity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. beauty comes in and God loves me for who I am. Mm -hmm. So that's been, I mean, that's an honest thing. I, I'm just like, my hair doesn't have the same elasticity as it did before. <laughs> Can I say this? Our story isn't the reason for us to shrink. Mm -hmm. It's actually the reason to show up. Oh, yes. Exactly. You know, so the pain of our past is the very reason that we step in. Do you see the new thing I'm doing? I'm bursting out in a new way in your life. When it's not about competition or status or power, it's about seeing who God's created someone to be and naming that and calling them out. This other-centered, mutual submission love. You say I am love when I can't feel a thing. You say I am strong but I think I am weak. You say I This generation is today facing unprecedented challenges in the digital age. And so we have to be courageous to, to meet them where they're at and in their questions, in their doubts, in their reasons for walking away. The safest place for our rage is before God. That is where we can express our heart and our soul, our sorrow, and be met with God's love for us in those spaces. You are seen, heard, and deeply loved by God. You are loved by God. Lorna, I don't know if I've ever done this, interviewed you, have we? <laughs> We sat we together. We talk a lot. We though. talk a lot. I know. Yeah. We've been friends for a long time. So, this is this is really special for me because for me to chat with you about you helping launch this dream of See Here Love. I mean, this this is really you. I had this dream. No, it's really you. Okay. You came well, and pitched me. Uh, I remember it was a Starbucks. Starbucks. And it was. Uh, you came and pitched me, and I knew you had the chutzpah to say you would also carry the management responsibility of right. this, and you would carry the fundraising responsibility. Yes, of it. I remember that. And why would I say no? <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 you know, it was important that we do more Christian media, mm -hmm. and here you were ready with a great idea. And, and that's my hope. You know, the dream, Lorna, as we go into new seasons of our life, the dream for me and with See Here Love is to continually share the story of what Jesus has done in my life and is doing, bring those stories onto the set, and in that inspire people to say, we want these stories told in the chaos and confusion of, of other stories being told, but this is the gospel, good news, life-giving story. And so um, thank you though, again, for the opportunity, for inspiring me, for seeing me when I was down. I mean, it couldn't be here without you, and you know it's that. it's growing and it's growing. <laughs> so here we are at 175. Yeah. Um, and you, uh, you've got new outlets through the YouTube work, mm -hmm. through the podcast. And radio. And, and then there's the student mentoring that's going on right. on See, Here Love. There is the road work that's going on. So I want to ask if you've been a, partner, a financial partner, and a prayer partner with See, Here Love, thank you. It's amazing, and your investment has been well placed. God is growing it. And we'd like more, wouldn't yes. we? Because there's, it's so evident that there is a market for this kind of godly friendship that you see on See, Here Love. So there's a global market waiting. There, there is, is a, a marketplace that's waiting that doesn't ever go to church. This kind of outreach in media happens when people give. So I hope you find it worth your while to come and be part of this studio experience today and to also consider financially helping, financially supporting, because there is no Christian media unless the people of God join together with the team. These skills that Mel and the team have here and our financial resources as her friends and supporters in the audience. So get behind See, Here Love as part of your giving priorities. It's a wonderful, mm -hmm. wonderful mission, Melinda. Thank couldn't you. couldn't be happier. Thank you for that, Laura. So are you tired at all? 175 <laughs> shows? Yeah, I, um, there are moments I was like, oh. But you know what the thing is, when, like you said, when you're called to be a storyteller of the good news of Jesus, <laughs> It isn't hard work. It's like, it's, it's, here's the thing. It's hard work in doing the work, but when you're actually in this space, yeah. it's actually not. Yeah. It's like, this is, this is what, you know, I was meant to do, but here's the thing. I could not do it without my great team. You need a yes. team. Yes. So that part of the, the funding and, and donations also help build the team yeah. to make this happen. And so yeah. the team is great and I'm having a great time. Yeah. I'm having so much fun. Yeah. There's about, for those of you who don't fully understand the media broadcast world, there's there's probably about 17 to 19 people behind the scenes that you don't see when there's a host on set. Mm. And they are just triggering 
uh, lighting, <laughs> audio, everything. It's keys. like keys and floor directing and all kinds of things. Yeah, directing. So the there's whole, a lot. Yeah, and then and then the detail chase right. that the producing hosts have that you've yes. got these wonderful gals on the floor. Yeah. So so it's uh, beautiful to see this happen. And thank you for growing with Crossroads Media mm. Group. It's just a blessing to have See Here Love continue. Thank you, Lena. Oh, Lorna, you know, as we continue the conversation about it takes everybody to help you get where you need to go. Lorna was the one who, when I had this idea of a show, she was CEO of Crossroads and Yes TV. And I said, I have a dream, I have an idea. She goes, pitch it to me. You have 50 minutes. Come to Starbucks at 7 a.m. You have 50 minutes to pitch it to me and convince me that you should be part of the team. So I met her with my tall, non-fat, extra hot, no foam Tazo chai. I had her Starbucks in hand and I pitched it to her and I had no idea what she would say. And she said, this is great. And then come back with me with some money because when you put money, it means that you're serious about it. And I came back with um, quite a bit of promise money and she said, let's do it. Let's go on this journey together. And so I wanted to feature her because unfortunately she couldn't be here at the event but we taped that uh, a few days ago so that you could see her and hear her and how she brought me in uh, to do the show. Well, talking about women who have helped me along the way, this is really, really special for me uh, because this panel right now represents, yeah, friendship, love, family, um, new friends and everything else. So I'm gonna introduce you all and then we're gonna share a few things. Uh, this is my best friend, Marcia Minchin. Clap, clap, Marcia. Uh, I'm going to out Marcia because she really <laughs> didn't want to be on. Uh, in that, she says, I'm on because I love you, but this isn't her thing, is it? No. No, not her thing. But she said, and I said, Marcia, I need you to be on because you represent when girlfriends champion you and support you, you can do it. Wow. Like that, that really is it. And uh, when Mars, when I was going through a very difficult separation and divorce, Marcia was the one who you've heard me, if you have heard me speak before on the show, she was the one who said to me, Melinda, today is not your forever. Mm. Amen. You will get through this one day at a time and I'll be with you and God will be with you. And I actually plagiarized and stole that from Mars and made it a big talk of mine where I've been asked to speak all over Canada. Thank you, Marcia. <laughs> Just because of that, because today is not your forever, um, and with that great truth. So, uh, great friend, we'll get back. I'm gonna go kind of do some introductions, but thank you for being here and being brave to come on. Okay, good. Oh, Melanie Stevenson is a new friend, right? A really, really new friend the past year or so. Melanie writes blogs for See Here Love. She hosted a, a donor dinner for See Here Love and brought all her really awesome friends in the Cambridge area to meet me and hang out and eat. And Melanie's been a really big champion of me and support. And you've been on the show as well mm -hmm. as a guest. Mm -hmm. yep. But uh, Melanie has been just really great at just praying and, and supporting. And so I'm so glad that you're here. Mm -hmm. And Linda Cho. Oh. Hi, Linda. Hi, <laughs> Linda is also a newer friend. But Linda mm -hmm. has been one of the first guest co-hosts mm -hmm. that we've had on See Here Love this year, taking time from her really busy work mm -hmm. um, in, oh, yeah, artists and just people of influence and coming to just be on the couch mm -hmm. and share story and ask me questions and everything else. So I wanted them to come on just so that you hear a little bit about what it takes, that when you have a dream, uh, what it takes uh, to make it happen. So Mars, I'm gonna start with you. You know, as a best friend, as a girlfriend, seeing my journey, we've known each other for 25. Five years, Mars has been one of my best friends for 25 years. Why has it been so important for you, Mars, to just really, you know, support me and pray for me and listen to when I cry and mm -hmm. have cried and <laughs> been frustrated? Why, why has it been really important to support? Well, before I say, respond to that, I just have to say it's such a privilege to be here and thank you. I, I am truly honored and, and I'm amazed at, at what has happened and what you've accomplished here, Mel. It's just really beautiful and really powerful and um, really a privilege, so thank you. In terms of why it's so important, I, I, I was reflecting on it and actually I asked my daughter last night, why do you support your friends? And she said, well, that's what friends do. Mm. 
And I thought, well, that's really, really simple. I don't know if that'll work. And the longer I thought about it, the more I thought, actually, it's really true. We were created and designed to be in community, to love, to give ourselves to one another. And that's what this is about between you and me. Um, I, I've, it's been such a privilege. We've walked so many paths together, and uh, I'm so grateful to be here still. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. The today is not your forever, Mars. Mm. I just sort of want to just talk a little bit about that because that has been a really key truth for me that I've shared to like thousands of people across Canada and, and on the show. Why is it so important? Why do you think that's resonated with both of us, this, this truth of the today is not your forever? Well, life is filled with hills and valleys, right? And in, in the valley, sometimes it's really hard to remember that there's another place to be, there's hope, and that there will be again a mountaintop. There will be those moments of joy and triumph and celebration like today. Mm -hmm. and, and we get lost sometimes in the despair and loneliness of, of feeling like failures or feeling discouraged or feeling lost. And so for me, that, that saying, I actually don't know where it came from. I, I oh, so think... we both plagiarized <laughs> it for somebody. I'm going to go with yes. Yeah, we're going to trademark that right away. <laughs> Uh, but, but no, God is all about bringing hopes to the hopeless. Mm -hmm. And when we find ourselves in despair, he says, lift your eyes and find me there. I'm your help. Mm -hmm. And so that is what that is all about for me. And every one of us in this room and, and across uh, needs to hear that there is hope. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And finally, about friendship. We have a lot of like women here and people watching, women watching. Just the power, I mean, you've mentioned it, but just the power and importance of being a a good girlfriend to one another. Yeah. Talk about that and what that can look like to be really like effective as far as friendship. Ah, oh, no small question. Yeah, that is. You. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It's it's for me. It comes down to faithfulness. Like as a friend, I my kids will roll their eyes <laughs> even now as I say, if you want to have good friends, you need to be a good friend. Mm. And it is that simple. If you want people to be in your life, you need to invite them in and to be willing to share it. To be willing to be vulnerable and to give of yourself. And I'm yeah, that's the beauty of this. Beautiful. Thanks. Thanks, Morris. We'll just give you a little. <laughs> <laughs> Did a great job considering that, right? You were so nervous and she was, but thank you. Thank you for being oh with me course. here. Thanks. Yeah. Melanie, for you, I mean, we're new friends. You're now blogging and, you know, you've hosted a dinner and you've just been a great support. Mm -hmm. What ha has it and is it about sort of See Here Love, its mission and vision that, that really connects with you? Yeah. Well, I, obviously, being a writer, believe in the power of story. Mm. And story mm. is transformative. And everybody can relate to a story. Yeah. And so what you're doing here is allowing women to tell their story authentically, mm -hmm. um, beautifully, and then creating that safe place for them. Mm -hmm. And you know, we're all different, but mm -hmm. there's similarities when we share a story. We can connect yes. and relate and we can heal together. Mm -hmm. Whether it's the viewer or each other on the couch, you know, telling your story is powerful and it transforms. And so it's easy for me to get right behind that. That's what I do when I write, mm -hmm. what the privilege of being able to blog has done also to, you know, compliment the show. You know, if you're dealing with a certain topic, to be able to give a resource for someone else to tie in with. If they particularly spoke to them, they can maybe look in further think about it more, you know, and just really delve into it. So that's been a real privilege and honor mm -hmm. to be able to. And then just to support you yourself, like mm -hmm. to do something like this is really monumental. When you're in it, the day-to-day -day grind, people just see this part, right? <laughs> but the day-to-day -day grind of putting it all together, you know, the, the thinking it through, the planning, the making this look easy is very, very hard. And so I think like, you know, the small things that we can do, you as a friend, me now as a friend, the small little things that we can do to push that forward to help you birth it week after week, you know, is, is, a, is a, a privilege and honor, really. Mm. So, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Molly. That, that means a lot. And again, it's a friendship from 25 years to, has it been a year? Yeah, just We're just a year. one year friendship. And <laughs> yeah. so in the journey of friendship, it can be 25, 20, it can be mm. new, it can be long but it takes friends mm -hmm. along the journey, so thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Linda Cho. Yes, darling. So, a guest <laughs> co-host, a firecracker. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you know, you, I, I really love that, you know, you took, you're so busy, and you took, you know, some good time out mm -hmm. to be on the show. Uh, why? Well, first of all, if Melinda calls you, you don't <laughs> say no. You're like, the answer is yes, <laughs> always. 
Um, but honestly, I mean, I, 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 I'm trying to find the words to not just blabber a re repetition of what everyone has already said so far because it's so profound, it's so monumental. And I, I was praying about even how to try and um, articulate what you're doing here, Melinda. And, you know, um, Hebrews talks about a cloud of witnesses that cheers us on. And uh, oftentimes I've thought of that cloud of witnesses to be something in glory, far away, distant. But you've created a cloud of witnesses here of women and men that support one another in Canada that want to share stories, like 175 episodes, that's 175 <laughs> topics, not just stories. You can probably multiply that by two or three when you talk about individual stories, but 175 topics, difficult topics, of those of us who are so complex, who are so complex in, our, in, in what we go through as parents, as individuals, as friends, as family members. Um, 175, I mean, think, I, I look forward to the day that you're celebrating 175 more episodes, right? There's so much more to celebrate and more to talk about and more to touch on. But for me, it's it's like, wow, God, what an honor and a privilege to be able to participate, to support, to be, um, you know, talks. the Bible talks about David and his mighty men. Like, what an honor to even play a small part in what he's doing in, in See Her Love, what he's doing in your life. Um, and it's just, it's of course, the answer is of course, right? <laughs> like, yes. And I remember, I don't know, Mel, if you remember this, but I remember when, just when you were about to launch See, Here Love, you showed me a little tour of that robotic cameras that yeah. you were like, see the cameras over here and this is the table, it's so exciting. And to see this now and to see the faces here that represent thousands of people impacted mm -hmm. by See, Here Love, it's just, yeah. yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, you guys, so much. Mm -hmm. Any last thoughts? I know we're heavy because my floor director, Kelvin, is showing me a sign that says heavy, but I, I'm not listening to him or looking. I'm trying to avoid him, which is so bad. My rebellious spirit's coming out. Um, any other thoughts yeah. you just want to say, even yeah. just encouraging mm -hmm. to, to our audience just about mm -hmm. faithfulness and friendship? Mm -hmm. any, any last thoughts to say? Yeah, I would say just continue to show up for, mm -hmm. for each other. You know, and don't silence your story for fear of, you know, not um, being, you know, all put together. Yeah. I think that's the biggest thing I would say, you know, make sure you tell your story. Your story is going to help heal someone else. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Amen. Marcy, anything? I don't. Okay, it's okay. <laughs> Linda, any last thoughts? Um, I, I mean, I want to just say, Melinda, you are such a representation of what it means to be a friend um, and to be someone who uh, recognizes um, the opportunity uh, and the platform that they've been given to share with others. And you do that without fear selflessly without, you know, when you talk about, when you have a show about um, comparison, you live it. Do you know what I mean? You live um, the diversity, you live empowerment, you live encouragement. And I just want to encourage all of us, you know, let, let the show, let's see here love just be a launching pad, right? Like a fire starter, like let it be the match that sparks, but the candle that burns is us living that life of mm -hmm. love and honor and friendship and realizing that God has made us all so uniquely like with this incredible story mm -hmm. uh, and that we are, and I know this has probably become cliche at this point, but your tagline, we, you are seen, you are heard, and you are deeply loved, still ministers to my soul. <laughs> yeah. And that is the truth. Yeah. And uh, we can share that as friends with one Thank another. You. I didn't realize this was going to be a big, like, kind of gush back to me. <laughs> I'm feeling like overwhelmed, but um, <laughs> thank you. You know, I couldn't do this work without you three which represents a whole bunch of people out here in the audience and listening on the live stream and, and you know, on our show. So thank you for just believing in me, mm -hmm. for sticking with me, for being faithful, for your texts. Mm -hmm. There are times where I needed a text and I got a text from you, a call, a prayer, um, so intentional and so faithful. So I'm thankful and let's do another 175 yeah. together. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you so much, you guys. Thanks for being with me. All right, we'll just wait till it goes. Yeah, but Jesus came as a man, so obviously he came as the gender of power. Yeah, mm -hmm. He came that. as the gender of power to show people how to lay it down. Yeah. 
Oh, and so, and so, and so to no. lay it, wow, so wait, to lay it down. Say that again. Yeah. So he came as the gender of power because in that yeah. context, yeah. men had power. Women had no rights to lay it down. So he gets down with his disciples. Wow. He starts washing their feet, <laughs> like a not just like a slave, like a woman slave. Wow. He starts washing their feet. Wow. He says, "You start doing likewise." If he came mm -hmm. as a woman, said, "Oh, let me wash your feet. Let me serve you," yeah. they would have said, "Well, that's what a woman that's does." That's so your role. Yeah. So no big deal. So he turns everything on its head because yeah. we men, we need to learn the lesson. Every parent has dreams for their kids, and uh, so watching them um, not not come true, not not come to fruition, is uh, is heartbreaking. There's a grief that goes along with it. That uh, sorry, um, that it is different because like the grief kind of never stops. You kind of deal with it and move on, and then it hits you again different stages um, of their lives at different birthdays and uh, you just have to change your dream. It's, a, it's a different yeah. dream. Top three men's greatest needs, honor and respect, sexual intimacy, friendship. Now as Ron says hey, wait, wait at, a at our honor and, honor and respect, respect, sexual, sexual intimacy, intimacy friendship. friendship. A lot of men are saying no, those top two need to be flipped. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, my greatest need is not honor and respect. It's and sexual you know intimacy. what it is. Yeah. But no, Ron says no, it's true, it is. And honor and respect is so important to a man, it's like oxygen for his soul. Mm. If there is sort of a general stereotype that people say about millennials, it is the word entitled, is that they want everything and they feel entitled to it. Well, I say go for everything you want. Just understand there are consequences with the choices totally. that you make. Yes. So if you choose to not work full time and have you know reduced hours, mm -hmm. the consequence is you are probably going to make less money. Right. I will now light the Christ candle, declaring that Jesus is the light of the world, the light that drives out all the darkness, the light that shows us our way. And he is the light that brings the world hope, peace, joy, and love. The roots of, I feel, almost everything in my life happens by being brave enough to stop fighting the pain and denying the pain or the questions, but instead fully lean into it and, and trust that there would, I would be met in the wilderness and on the other side of that would be deliverance. Wow, excellent. It's a yeah. season, mm -hmm. but it's in preparation yeah. Yeah. for the yeah. next Because we always want to run out of it, get out of it Do quickly, it. and yet actually those are some of the best places yes. I've, I've learned about myself. Because yeah. yeah. it's scary sitting and thinking about yourself. You know, you never want to be confronted with you, and yeah. it, it puts, it shines a light on a lot of things that, you know, you need to work on, the, the things yeah. you value, and then it, it it was those places where I have felt the closest with God. Yes. Right. Totally. Right? Mm -hmm. Or yeah. can I just say, for yeah. some people, mm -hmm. the wilderness, won't come to an end until we get to heaven. Hundreds of millions of images that you're seeing every day in our current society are teaching you and training you to be dissatisfied with what you have. So for me, gratitude has gone from like just a nice idea right. to an actual survival mechanism for people who want to live differently in this current world. Those who look to him will be radiant with joy. No shadow of shame will touch their faces. So I think for me, one of the greatest things was bringing that shame to Christ. Yeah. And knowing that he invites us to come as we are. So often we think, well, I'll tidy myself up mm -hmm. and then I'll come back to God. But God said, no, no, come as you are. Come where you are. Come with who you believe yourself to be. Because sometimes we think, I am what happened to me or I am the decisions I made. No. When we've trusted Christ, you say, I am a child of God. 
As you were saying that, I felt there's a song um, that Brooke Fraser sings, and it's break my heart for what breaks yeah. yours. Mm -hmm. Open up my eyes to the things unseen. Yeah. Show me how to love like you have mm -hmm. loved me. But when God takes a hold of that, it's, it's really empowering. You'd be surprised at how generous um, He can make our hearts and how broad mm -hmm. and how deep and lying on the floor, um, you know, next to grandma or, um, you know, loving kids who might not love you back at all. and working yeah. with clients who are struggling. I never talk about the end of the road where they're gonna be all better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I talk about growing in resilience. Yes. Mm -hmm. Growing in that. confidence that they can be okay, growing in faith. You cannot choose the stand, but the wow. light is so powerful. Mm -hmm. It goes wherever God would have you be. Oh, Kevin. <laughs> Hi. I look at that and I'm like, wow, uh, that is amazing. It's I mean, really it, remarkable. It isn't because you see the kind of change and progression of like the studio and us with a different co-host to where we are today. Mm -hmm. And uh, Kevin Kirk, um, you have believed in me as a friend, but also as a sponsor with Tyndale University, sponsoring and supporting my show from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And that's big because yes, it takes your friends and your girlfriends and it takes an amazing organization like Crossroads to kind of give you the foundation. But you also want organizations to align with you, come beside you to help you because you know financially you need support but also mm -hmm. just aligning in mission and value. Mm -hmm. So you're here because how did this happen? And why are you supporting this little show? It was like a little show where there's so many other things you could support but you and your team decide to support us. Mm. So, why? <laughs> well, there's a recurring theme happening throughout today, I think, and that is your incredible ability to tell stories and to bring things to life. So I remember sitting in a certain coffee shop that's been named a couple of times already <laughs> uh, when you pitched me on this idea. And a couple of, we've known each other a long time yeah. as, a, as an alumnus. I as remember alumnus when you were a student <laughs> many years ago. And, uh, and you, have, you yourself have an incredible story of your own journey, and you know how to tell that story uh, in a way that really impacts people for, for the better. So, so you know how to tell a story. And when you pitched this whole idea of the topics, you know, being bold and fearless and courageous and diving right in with sort of a fresh but timeless take on it, uh, you know, it, it was simple to get behind it. Your audience, I think as I've watched your audience grow, uh, kind of the things that they, they are, they're asking big questions about life. They're mm -hmm. asking about um, things that they're struggling with. They want, I think they want to make an impact in the world and the topics that you're covering are allowing them to do that. And it actually is, aligns with the kinds of students that choose Tyndale. So, you know, from a corporate perspective, I have a responsibility to our supporters and so on in terms of how we use sponsorship yeah. dollars and promotional dollars. So we have to ask the question, will this be of value from a promotional perspective? But any time that we can come alongside an organization where uh, we can actually further each other's missions and visions, where we can actually build on each other, it's mm -hmm. not just a transaction. Uh, it's mm -hmm. just, and working with an alumnus, of course, is always yeah. that much more special. It's always good. Yeah. You know, I think that, um, I've been so encouraged, you know, by you, Kevin, in that, you know, one of the things, especially when Lorna, the CEO, said, when you are going to do a show here, you need to go and raise money. And at that time, it was just me with an iPad. That was it. I there was remember. nobody with mm -hmm. me. And I had to go out by myself, knock on doors, make phone calls, meet with people, and, and get them to believe in the stream. Do you remember? I didn't even have a sample of the show. Nope. I didn't even have a show. I had a dream in my head, and, and Kevin's like, you know, do you have a video? And I'm like, nope. <laughs> do you have anything? Do you have like a marketing resource tool, a brochure? Nope. I had nothing. I think I just chose the name. Mm -hmm. You had I the name? I think I just chose the yeah. name, and I was like, heard, love, see, see here. We're there. We're got it. We're going to get that. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe a website, but it was completely, I had nothing, mm. uh, a dream a big God dream, and I'm so glad that you saw through that because a lot of people would be like, nope, I need all the information right up at the top. I need all these things, Melinda, before I say yes and check off. So there was a lot of faith and trust in me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't know why you did that, but you did. Well, like I said, <laughs> we've known each other a long know, time. So, sort of so like, your wow. ability to translate ideas into reality, I mean, I mean, 
what you were doing was new. I mean, the web show, first of all, was, yeah. was relatively new at the time, right? Um, as a sponsor, I get the ability to, to, you share some of the analytics with me. So, like, could you have imagined no. around no. the world, literally, no. No. Uh, where this has gone now, where there's huge audiences? Uh, you know, it's, it is just really remarkable, Melinda. I mean, you're to be congratulated. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, Tyndale, just what you're doing is just incredible quality. We're proud to have our name associated with this. Um, we think that you are making an incredible impact and an incredible difference. We need more See Here Love. I don't think God is done with you yet. Mm -hmm. uh, this is 175, again, who could have imagined, but right. uh, what's God going to do with this next? And we're along for the journey. This has been quite a ride. Well, thank you, Kevin. Thank you so much for mm -hmm. coming all this way, for being here, and just thank you again for your, your sponsorship and mm -hmm. your belief in me. And to all the great Tyndale you know, alumni and alumnus, you know, I think for them, they need to hear that you know, dreams can come true. Mm -hmm. There's hard work, Absolutely. community to support them. So thank you for the good work that you Pleasure do, too. Well. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. All right. transition look who's coming up come on up oh do you are you mic'd I'm mic'd okay so this is a little risky for me to bring up your husband to talk about just how great you are but it's not that wasn't the plan and I love being on TV he doesn't so this is a big thing as you can see the theme a lot of my friends don't really like to be on TV but they're doing it because they love nope. me and support me so are we sitting or are we standing you know, or... let's should we stand what do you feel more comfortable no. with yeah. okay we'll just stand because yeah. then I, I want to stretch my legs out All right. okay so I brought up Chris my husband because I thought it was important that everybody was gushing about me and saying all these great things, but you need a counterbalance. Um, <laughs> not that you're not gonna say good things, but I just wanna be honest because I think authenticity and openness is good, and that's what the show is about. So um, I brought is Chris- it, Is it good? Yeah, well, no. I don't know. I'm like now getting terrified that you're standing beside me and you're gonna say some things, but I think I'm it's I'm terrified good. too, okay. so let's see. So we're gonna talk about uh, what it has meant to support me, what it's meant for you to sure. support me, and, and then just like just as husband and wife, because our our story has been kind of put out there um, on the show because was it? Yeah, I did oh, share about you. I wasn't aware. <laughs> I do try to tell him when I talk about him. Yeah, no. but I mean, Chris, you and I have been on quite a journey ourselves. Yep. Uh, we are now in a blended family, our second marriage, um, and in a blended family. So that's had some unique um, joys and challenges, mm -hmm. and just coming together after. Uh, both of us were married before and then divorced, and now we're, we're here. Here we are. Finding love. So when, I think what I have to say, too, is it's probably not a great idea to get married and then immediately launch a new initiative. I wouldn't recommend it. Yeah. <laughs> a P.S., if you're an entrepreneur and you have a dream, maybe don't get married and immediately just start it. Plan accordingly. Yeah, plan accordingly your life on those things. Because I'll be honest, uh, it wasn't, it wasn't, easy because we're adjusting to marriage and blended family and I'm like I'm all in I've got a dream for God let's go late hours you know late hours early mornings late hours late hours late hours all in weekends nights like when you launch something you're launching and Chris has had to be very patient and strong in that so talk about that I don't mind you talking honestly about how hard it's been sure what was the question oh <laughs> the question I, think, I think the question is why has it been so important for me as a husband okay. to support you? You should be doing my job because that's exactly the question, but I just made it into something I know, else. it was great okay. what you did there. Okay. Why? Um, okay. So as a spouse, as a partner, I have to ask a question, and that is, what do I want for you? Before we even get started, before we even got married, I mean, we're still talking. We were, we were talking about this show three and a half, four years ago as an idea, as a concept. Yeah. Um, and, but then we get married and we enter into this new stage and one of the questions that I ask is, what do I want for you? What do I want for you? You're my partner, you're my spouse, you're my favorite. Oh, I'm okay? his favorite. So, uh, and there will be no crying in this segment, okay, by the I way. So, um, <laughs> they get together, I, by they I mean like the girls get together and Mel will be like, oh we got together and we cried and it was so great. And as a guy I'm like, that sounds awful. Like, <laughs> Paul, you want to get together and cry? That'll be, yeah. All right. Wow. So the question, anyway, so what do I want for you? Okay, what do, yeah. And I want the best for you. And so I look at you as uh, a gifted and called very special individual. You have skill sets and talents that I 
uh, could never have. Um, and so you had this dream and you wanted to launch this show. And my job as your partner is to ask, what do I want for her? And how can I support? And how can I come alongside? And what do I need to do? And first, I need to acknowledge your gifting and your talent and your skill set are, are amazing. And I, and, I, and I do that and affirm you. Even at you know, times when you feel like, oh man, like I am, you know, we've talked about like the imposter syndrome and, and we both share that. We both have that in our respective lines of work. But you know, why, it's bit, why has it been important? Because I get to do that job. I get to be your cheerleader. Um, the B side to that is like, for me, I get to be then part of the team too. <laughs> like I'm not just like the purse holder or the coffee getter or the late night theological consultant. Like, honey, is this theologically sound? I do do that. And just as a pause and insert, when I sound brilliant in my theology, when I'm doing like my, my clothes and, and thoughts about God, it's Chris. <laughs> it really is. I, I have to say this, you know, I will sit and as I'm writing my script, I'll say, hun, is this theologically sound? Does this include everybody? Is this the heart and character of Jesus? When I say this word, is that word a good word to use while I say it? Because words are powerful. I don't want to abuse words. I don't want to use words that are wrong, that are hurtful, that undermine or that do not include others. And here is Chris. We're sitting on the couch. I'm like, honey, what about this name key? Or what about this lower, you know, like this, this, this um, statement or whatever? What do you think? And many times he's corrected me. English, grammar, ways to say things. And so that's been really awesome and helpful. We do this thing where she'll be like, how would you phrase this? Or, and I say, do you want to know how I would phrase it or how I think that you should phrase it? <laughs> so there's a bit of a map there to, to figure that out. But yeah, the, like I said, there's that A side of as a partner, as a spouse, I, I want to love and support the work that you are doing. And, but the B side is then, I, yeah, I, I look at it as a privilege to be part of what you're doing. Uh, you know, to be part of this space where it's like there are so many diverse voices, where there are so many important issues and concerns, um, issues around mental health, issues around gender justice, um, issues around international development, and just you bring these big, massive topics. And so I want to be part of that. I want to I support you in that. So that's, that's question number one. Oh. <laughs> That was good. That's it. That's all I got. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Um, one last thing. Is um, this the, the difficulty, the difficult part one? Yeah. That, oh. Yeah, do that. Okay. So we'll just end with like the difficult part of it. Because I think there's an honest part about when you're launching a dream or you're doing something, there is the hard part of it. Um, and so just talk into that and how, as a spouse, you've been able to kind of navigate around that. Right. Okay. So there are two words that come up. Do, like uh, the first one is rhythm. And the second one is boundaries. <laughs> I don't know why I laughed to that rhythm and boundaries. Okay. It's going to be hilarious. Oh, man. Okay. Uh, oh, man. But, you know, like, we are both very busy. Um, you know, I work a job that has sort of pretty much regular office hours, but then there'll be some traveling. And, mm -hmm. um, and so we have a rhythm uh, in, our, in our vocation, and we have, you know, separately. Sometimes those things get so out of sync that it'll be like three weeks that go by mm. until we realize like, hokey dino, we haven't really like talked for real. Because you know, you were in Vancouver last weekend and I was at a conference the weekend before and then I'm going to Guatemala next week mm -hmm. and then you know, it's like it's all over the place. Mm -hmm. So the rhythm, the challenge of being intentional about finding ways that we can sync up you know, and some of that has to do, you know, falls on me, you know, when it's 2 a.m. and I wake up and the light is still on and there's some late night editing going on, mm -hmm. you know, I just, you know, will kind of nudge over and be like, might be time to come to bed, you know, um, but to find that. The second one is, uh, yeah, the rhythm. The second one is the boundaries piece. And so my favorite example of this, and this is not like a, like I'm not pulling the curtain You're back. Not, no. I'm not, I promise wow, I'm not pulling like, the curtain well, back. Well, in the show that's supposed to be authentic and real, like. Okay, all right, I'll be authentic and but real. But be gentle. No, but like, you know, <laughs> fourth quarter, Raptors are up by three, two minutes left in the game is not the time to come and say, hey, honey, do these shoes go with these pants? 
Why not? Because first off, it's hilarious that you would even ask me. Right. I'm wearing a shirt that looks like a couch from the 70s. So don't ask me about anything. Okay, okay, fair, uh, fair. Fashion related, but yeah. no, I, but I, but like it, it's that, it's that piece of, um, yeah, the boundary issue of like, where does see hear love and, and, where it is. and you know, and, and sometimes those lines get blurred. Right. But I think, you know, the, the challenge is to navigate that stuff well. Because for you, your office hours are any time before the deadline. <laughs> right? Pretty much. My team is like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, Trish right. is nodding. And, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. but you know what? It's a privilege to be in your corner and, you know, to watch you do what you do and to get to be a part of it. And you're awesome at it. Yeah. Oh, Chris. <laughs> um, I just want to say thanks to, I think, it's a good moment. I, I honestly, in, when you talk about redemption and second chances, like this is a beautiful second chance. And to have a man that really gets it and believes in it and, and works hard with me to do it. It's not easy launching a dream and having a schedule like this and Christian media and fundraising, fundraising and, the, and some of the stress and drive because you believe in this so much, but it's a lot of work. You need a, you need a partner, a spouse to be there and have your back and be your biggest cheerleader and yet to speak very honestly about rhythm and boundaries and you, you need the truth. You cannot go about your life and be like, Woo! I'm a free bird. I can do whatever I want when you're in a relationship and a marriage. And so it's been really good, Chris, that, um, that we have that beautiful respect and love that even when you do call me out on it, I'm like, okay, you do that because you want the best for me. Mm -hmm. You're for me. I am. So thank you. Can you guys give him a hand? Love I love you. Mm -hmm. I love you. I love you. Thank you, Steve. Yeah, he's got to go. Well, it's sort of a family affair because I'm going to have my dad, Paul Estrix, come up and do the closing benediction and prayer for you all. This is really special. Um, hi, Dad. Hello, Aww. dear. <laughs> I really laughed today when your girlfriend said they couldn't say no to you. <laughs> I had a chance to do that a few times, usually when you were wanting to buy a new shoes. <laughs> See, some things never change. Um, um, Mom, do you want to come up or are you okay? Okay, I know. Uh, but this is really special. So like I said before, I mean, my mom and dad are here who have been so faithful and supportive of me right from the beginning. And it wasn't some easy years when I made some poor and bad decisions for my life. And yet you guys just remained faithful and prayed for me and you were always there. And you need parents that will, will always be there for you even when you make really bad decisions. And uh, you know, and so I'm so glad that yeah. you're here, we could celebrate. Well, it's great, to, it's great to be here and to see this. I mean, from the time you were little, uh, when she was three years old, oh, no. she did her first radio promo three years old on DZAS Radio in Manila, Philippines. She did a promotion for uh, the Children's Bible Hour and talking to kids. Come on, listen to this program every Saturday, 9.30 in the morning. Right here. Anyway, that. she started at three years old, so I'm not surprised that she's here at this point in life. But it's been a real, it's been a real joy. She's also been a very sharp person when there was a little bit of sibling rivalry when she was young. Uh, she has an older brother and sister who were our natural children born in Canada. And whenever there was a little bit of sibling rivalry going on, we would hear her say to them, Mommy and Daddy had to take you, but they chose me. <laughs> oh, oh, <that's> so... <laughs> so she had life figured out from very early stages. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that was true. But it's been a great, a great ride. It's been really great, Dad. And I'm so thankful. So do you want to do a... Uh, well, let's pray. Here? Okay, let's pray. And then do I get to do the closing? You get to do the closing. You get to do our senior All love closing, right. Dad does. Okay. Okay, let's pray together. We thank you, Lord, for this day and for what we've celebrated today in a, a team effort to put together a communication tool to share Jesus with Canada and the world. And we thank you for what you have done and accomplished uh, through Melinda's leadership and through her team 
as they have communicated your love so well and so capably and so authentically. And so we thank you for many things. I thank you for this daughter that you gave us. Little did we know from the time we saw her in that crib at one week of age that this would be an event that we would enjoy a few years later. <laughs> and so we thank you for all that you've done and accomplished in her life. And we thank you for many things. Lord, we are thankful people. We are created in your image. Thank you for that. And therefore, every one of us has value. And we thank you that we can communicate that as well. We thank you for the fact that you see us, you hear us, and you love us shown so well through the giving of your only son who gave his life for us. So Lord, we are thankful and we give you thanks and praise for all you have accomplished in each of our lives and in your church, especially here in this area and in this place where the gospel has gone forth from so, for so many years on a faithful basis. So we give you thanks and we ask your blessing on each person here that they may go from here assured that you see them, you hear them, you love them. In Jesus' powerful name we pray, amen and amen. Amen. Thank you so, so much. I just want to do something just quick. Just, Iman Rosick, where are you? He's on the camera. Can you just wave? If you guys can look right there with Iman. Mm -hmm. Iman was my very first hire at the first show. He was, my, he was our director, my editor, uh, my encourager, my IKEA run guy, because my car mini couldn't fit things. Um, <laughs> and, and so that is Iman, faithful, right from the beginning. <laughs> you and I, Iman, right? First hire. I just want to thank our team. Where's the team? We're Kelly right there. Corey Kelly. Wave your hand. Kelly Trish. Trish, who does our guesting and influencer producing this. Trish, Trish, wave your hand at the back. There we go. Becca right here, who now edits and produces things here. This is Becca taking pictures. Laura Loopstra. Is Laura still here? Laura's right there. Does all of our social media. So thank for Lucy right here, who does, um, oh, a lot of pre-production and things, and is from Humber and interning. So this is Lucy. And then we've got a ton of people all over from Crossroads, Grace and Nicole and Carol. And I mean, it just goes on and on. So thank you so much. We couldn't do this without you. And again, thank you so much as well. Uh, before you go, definitely I'm going to stand at the back, take pictures as you go. Lots of pictures. But thank you for your prayers, your love. Make sure you stop at the booth. We'd love to connect with you with newsletters. And always know, as, as Dad said, you are seen. You are heard and you're deeply, deeply loved, loved by, by God. God. Amen. Have a great day. Thank you for coming.